Aw oh, yeah, Rivers here with some cool tech, and today I want to show you the T518 quad-core Android mini PC. First let's take a look at what comes inside of the box. So you've got the T518 itself, a color user manual, 2 amp power supply, a USB to micro USB cable to power it, an HDMI cable to hang the T518 from your TV, and a USB to micro USB adapter. Now inside the T518, you'll find some good hardware and some really good software. First the hardware, it's got a quad core rock chip 3188 CPU, Mali 400 GPU running at 500 megahertz, two gigs of DDR3 DRAM, eight gigs of flash memory, Wi-Fi 802.11 B, G, and N, Bluetooth 4.0, DNLA video sharing, an external antenna, and Android 4.2.2. Over on the front here, we've got a full-size HDMI 1.4 port, and on the back, you've got two USB ports for low-power devices like mice and remote controls, or to connect to a USB hub. And along the side, you've got your DC power and update port, you've got your SD card slot, good for cards up to 32 gigs, and you've got your flash mode button for updating the firmware. And on the other side, you've got a built-in external antenna, which gets a pretty good signal, but if you're going to be streaming a lot of HD content from your other computers, I'd still recommend a USB to Ethernet adapter. As long as you're in range, it runs really well, but when you start getting up to the edge of your Wi-Fi network, it slows down the whole device, which is kind of true for a lot of Android mini PCs. But really, the best part is the software, so let's go ahead and take a closer look now. Here's what you'll see the first time you start up the T518. They put enough apps that you can run without even having to go to the App Store. Plus it comes rooted so you can install apps for rebooting and backup, plus apps like full screen that hide the taskbar. I'll put links to these apps in the description below. Here you can see all the apps that come pre-installed, except I installed that reboot app there myself. But here you've got your DNLA streaming, you've got your Wi-Fi display if you have a 4.2 or later device. Here's one of my favorite things about the launcher. It comes with 10 different themes, so you can change the way the icons and backgrounds look. I was never too crazy about the wood theme, but I really love some of these themes that they give you. Here's a quick look at some of my favorite included themes. I like this launcher because it kind of helps out people who are new to Android mini PCs. You don't immediately have to go out and download a bunch of apps to get started on it. Here's one other cool feature. After you install an app on here, and you go back to the home, it automatically takes you over to the screen where and shows you that the app's installed. Now the stock launcher and apps that come with it are everything you need to get going and they're great but I like to install a whole bunch of apps on mine. So here I've installed Go Launcher HD, I've installed the Audio Glow Live Wallpaper and about 70 other apps that I use all the time. First up let's take a look at the settings. So Wi-Fi connected right up for me, no problems at all there, it seems to work really well. Bluetooth on this guy actually is Bluetooth 4.0 and it's working really good. I connected up my MOGA game controller for some little gaming and a, a Logitech mini boombox as well and they both work great at the same time. Ethernet worked good if you have a USB to Ethernet adapter. Here's the one I use and it works great on almost every Android mini PC I've tried it on. Over here you can see how much data each app uses, which you don't really need if you're just on a, your Wi-Fi network, but it's kind of nice to know anyways. And here are your screen resolution options. You have all the way up to 1080p available. This is running on a 720p kernel right now, but the output is at 1080p. I think it looks excellent, and a 1080p kernel probably will become available in the future if you want it. I'll put a link in the video description when new firmware becomes available. Over here we have how your storage is partitioned. So you've got one gig for app storage, and about 5.6 gigs for data storage, like MP3s, pictures, videos, that sort of thing. Your app partition size can be increased when you install a custom ROM, but what I'd like to see is manufacturers give you about 2 to 4 gigs for apps. You can save plenty of data on a micro SD card. 32 gigabyte cards are pretty cheap right now. And finally over here you can see it's Android 4.2.2 Jelly Bean, and here's all the kernel and build information down here. Now for a quick benchmark and some system information. So first off I'm going to run Linpack, and that just does a quick CPU benchmark. And this guy's running I'd say just a little bit above average right around 130. Average is probably right about 125 for a quad core A9 CPU. Now we'll run CPU-Z to get all the information about the device. So you can see here it's a quad core Cortex A9 based processor. Uh, you can see the individual clock speeds of the cores and it's variable depending on the load on the processor basically so it's not running at full speed right now. That's how phones and tablets save power though is whenever their CPU is not being used it drops the clock speed down and it's continuously variable. 
Over here, some more system information. So you can see it's got Android 4.2, 720p kernel, got two gigs of RAM, one gig of app storage space, all the stuff that we've covered before. Now, unfortunately, I couldn't run Antutu Benchmark on here. It kept crashing the system, but most other apps ran fine. Now, the Wi-Fi signal on here is nice and strong, probably helped by the external antenna and the good software. One strong point of the T518 is the Bluetooth. It uses Bluetooth 4.0 and it connects really well. I was able to connect my Logitech mini boombox speakers and my MOGA controller, that's for my phone, at the same time and everything worked great. I could even walk about 15 feet away before it would start cutting out. Here's me playing a little shadow gun with the MOGA controller on the T518. This is my new Vizio 65 inch TV. You can also see a review of that TV on my channel. There will be a link to it in the video description. I'll also put links to all the hardware I've shown so far in the video in the video description. So I mentioned earlier that this comes pre-rooted. That's nice because you can install apps that are really nice to have. One of the apps is Ultimate Backup Pro. I install all my favorite apps and then back them up with Ultimate Backup Pro. I copy the file to my SD card and next time I install new firmware I can just copy it over, run Ultimate Backup Pro and all my apps are back. Another cool app that requires root is called Full Screen and what it does is it hides the taskbar when you hit the down arrows and brings it back when you swipe up. It also hides the taskbar when you play a video full screen. And the best part is it's a free app. All you need is root access to run it. And finally we've got the MOGA Universal Driver. It's like a third party driver for that controller that you saw earlier. And it doesn't require root but root helps it have more options. So it's really nice having a rooted device for this driver as well. One more app that I would like to mention and that is the Arcos Video Software. It doesn't need root, I just wanted to mention it because it plays MKV movie files really well. They're nice and smooth, I don't notice any skipping in there at all. Home video files not quite as good, but MKV movies seem to play really well on here. So i definitely give it a try and I'll put a link to it in the description below for you. Okay, one last app that's pretty nice to have and that's this Audio Glow Live Wallpaper. Whenever you play music or any sounds on your Android Mini PC, it gives you this equalizer up here. It looks kind of sweet. This would give your TV some nice eye candy if you're playing a music playlist at, say, like a party and you don't want people to be just looking at folders and icons. All right, everyone. Thanks for watching my review of the T518 Android Media Player. It's a solid little player with great software. And I'll put uh, links to any updates and all the hardware and software you saw in the video in the description down below. Uh, be sure and give this video a like if you enjoyed it, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching, and as always, aloha.